Unsurprisingly, the interview sparks a massive response. Bilzerian has millions of followers, and many of them, of course, called out of the woodwork to cheerlead him. Plenty of people were shocked, as indeed I was in real time. The, the reaction has been shocking, Peace Morgan. It's been incredibly shocking, but not in the way that you expected. Now, as the fallout continues from the Dan Blazerian Peace Morgan Uncensored podcast, one thing is becoming apparently clear, that all these big media outlets, the main sources of information and news that we grew up with, the legacy media, these big podcast channels that have completely lost track of the narrative and they don't know how to rein it in, nor do they know where to next. He said that it was 4 million that died in Auschwitz and then they said it was down to a million, so they've revised the figure. Well, how many people, how many, how many people do you think were killed in the Holocaust? 71,000 that died in Auschwitz. How many do you think were killed in the Holocaust? Um, I don't know, but I would bet my entire net worth that it was under 6 million. Well, unsurprisingly, the interview sparks a massive response. Bilzerian has millions of followers, and many of them, of course, called out of the woodwork to cheerlead him. Plenty of people were shocked, as indeed I was in real time, that any public figure could spew such obvious prejudice as brazenly as he did. Others plenty of people were shocked. Who are these plenty of people? And what were they shocked about? Now, as usual, this is what the media always does. Peace Morgan comes out in reaction to gaslight the audience to try and control the narrative. So according to his ideological point of view, because he was flabbergasted, because he was shocked, because he thinks Dan Blazerian is a Nazi, then naturally, everybody shares his point of view. So everybody else is shocked. Why? Because Peace said everybody is shocked. Now, were they really shocked? What did people actually think about what happened? When I say people, I'm not talking about podcasters. I'm not talking about the legacy media, uh, people that share pieces ideological point of view. But we're talking about the average person. What did they actually think? In the new media landscape, anyone can speak unfiltered or uncensored to their followers and acolytes. At least when I interview somebody with incendiary views, audiences get to see those views being vigorously challenged. According Every to Peace, he's such an intellectual that he vigorously challenges views. And that's why he brings alternate views. That's why he brings Nazis on to challenge their views. Now, were they vigorously challenged? Anyone that po watched that podcast, what did you think of Peace Morgan's argument? And what proofs did he present against what Dan was saying? Now, did the audience think that you vigorously challenged his views? Did you convince the audience? Well, we're going to find out. A free speech is supposed to be uncomfortable. It's only by hearing the polar opposite of your own worldview you can be sure that you're right and understand why you believe that you are. Dan Bilzerian went a lot further than I was expecting him to. I was genuinely appalled by what I was hearing. I started out the interview thinking it was going to be more about his apparent so-called redemption arc. As you all saw, there's no redemption arc. He sunk into an abyss of anti-Semitism. And on that point, I've interviewed many people on both sides of the Israel-Palestine debate, professors, politicians, medics, victims, journalists, musicians, diplomats, comedians, and more. At regular interviews, uh, intervals, I've been criticized by people on both sides. Do I think Dan Bilzerian's interview made some big intellectual contribution to his vexed debate? No, I don't, actually. But Did Dan Bilzerian make any intellectual contribution to this vexed debate? According to Peace Morgan, absolutely not. The intellectual contributions have been left to intellectuals such as Peace Morgan. In the last year or so, he's been having a moral quandary. Why? Because he's so confused about this complex situation in the Middle East. There are so many intricacies attached to it. He's been discussing proportionality. How many children should be killed in proportion? That's the kind of intellectual contributions that people like Peace Morgan have been making. So let's find out what the audience actually thought. Did they think Dan made any kind of intellectual contribution? Did they think Peace Morgan made an intellectual contribution? Did they think that Peace Morgan vigorously challenged Dan's views? And were they as shocked? These plenty of people were they as shocked as Peace Morgan is presenting. Now, I came across this uh, channel called the H3 Podcast. And the host here is from The Chosen People. And the channel has something like 3 million, almost 3 million subscribers. I'm not even sure how that is possible. And you, when you see the channel, you understand. Anyway, so what he done, he's got this three and a half hour reaction to uh, the Dan Blazerian Podcast. And he basically, for about... 20 to 25 minutes of that podcast, the three and a half hours, he starts going through the comments section to see what the reaction was actually like. And Offensive, terrible things. But it's the like world, world conspiracy shit that, uh, eh, whatever, it's not better or worse. I'm trying to... well, what's he doing with I his saw face? On Twitter that the defense was that Jews owned the New York Times in, in, in Dan's uh, Holocaust uh, statement and that that's why the numbers were 
exaggerated because the Jews. The New York Times? Yeah. Single handedly yeah. fooled the entire world. What is he doing this face? That was one of their uh, defenses. He died in World War II. He's like, I don't know, but I bet my whole fortune it was less than six million. Fuck him. <laughs> what a fucking vile piece of shit. Well, he's, he's <laughs> such a fraud. I mean, the guy's never done a day of honest work in his life. He lived like his whole fucking life paying women to pretend they're interested in him. And now he's like, yeah, you know, I did hedon, hedon, hedonism, but now I just, I found myself and I just want to hang out with my friends. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Go actually work. Like, what does his company do? Wait, so he's... All you have to do is type shit like this and you, it's so, dude, if you type anti-Semitic shit, you will get so much engagement. Like, he is a literal airhead. He is a dumb, uncharismatic, unlikable loser. <laughs> A literal airhead, uncharismatic, because this guy just oozes charisma. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's jumping out of the screen, the amount of charisma he's got. <laughs> so let's see now, he's going to start skimming through these comments. I disagree with that. I think we're all equal. Gold. By the way, as a Jewish guy, I have never met a single person in my life in Israel or outside that thought that they were like, um, chose, like chosen people. Like, it's literally just like, some it's not a thing it's just not a thing um if the guy said muslim rather than jew pierce would be agreeing with him props to dan for having the courage to say what's on his mind no matter how controversial notice how pierce doesn't really want to discuss any of his claims but rather resorts to accusations that he's anti-semitic and just hates jewish people pathetic response to any points Dan made accusing him of being an anti-Semite. Listen, guys, I don't want to read this, but this, every, this is like basically 50 comments in a row. Dan, I don't believe in white... I'm going to read it all until there's, a, until there's not an uh, anti-Semitic one. I don't believe in white supremacy. What I don't believe in Jewish supremacy. I don't believe so what he did was he started going through the comments from the newest down, trying to find something positive uh supporting peace morgan's stance and he had one of his other mates uh go through start skimming through from the oldest comments up and so he goes 50 comments and it's all been you know all with dan it's all anti-semitic and so he's gonna keep skimming he wants to keep skimming until he finds something positive about uh self-preservation of money we had him in politics we need him in politics. So many people in this country just side with Israel because they don't like Muslims. Thank you for standing up and showing the truth. He doesn't uh, have a spine. Nor does he, he have still, morality. He still can't find for anything. Dan. For Dan, Avery, Pierce just gave a master class on ignoring the context. So much respect so for this guy was literally trying to read all the comments until he found something positive. The only thing Pierce did right in this interview was refrain from calling him a liar. <laughs> Never had a good opinion on Dan with how he got popular and how he spent his wealth i'm unexpectedly glad to see him turn around and use his platform to speak against the crown israel been killing against palestinians i agree with dan 109 percent well that comment that started thinking you put it then it turned positive a nazi thing that i don't get 109 it's very specific hmm. uh let's skip yeah, ahead actually he talks like a man of justice salute <laughs> Piers morgan could only call you names, but he can't call him so a liar. So he's still skimming through and he's getting more and more depressed. He's trying to find something positive. If you downvote a comment, I don't even think it affects the like amount. I just looked at new and they're all the same. It's like, all new, yeah. seconds ago. So I don't know. Maybe it's just numbers thing. <laughs> they're all anti-Semitic and new. Half a million people are watching. This is great. I support this guy. May God bless him. This man may be an instrument to the freedom of this Actually, pretty solid standpoint, Dan. As Pierce is trying to make him sound ridiculous. I never had an answer respect for Dan until right now. Never thought I'd say that. When Pierce said, "So he's literally almost minutes, spent twenty minutes going through the comments, and he can't find anything positive that he's looking for." About how this interview will play out when it airs, I don't think he realized hatred and telling the truth. Oh. 28,000. Yeah. So it is interesting that YouTube is deciding to show all of the uh, horrifically anti-Semitic comments. Yeah, I'm just scrolling. I mean, you can see here. Uh, here is an Arabic. <laughs> Arabic. <laughs> He's going to translate it. <laughs> who is this brave man? He's truly a human being who has not lost his humanity. He's right. There's an old video of Netanyahu dressed in the American parliament, telling Iraq to be dealt with. He also spoke about Libya and said his work in secret is to make nuclear bombs. This was all live. Piers Morgan still denies it. I think everyone who supported us. 
If only their hearts, only with their hearts. You do not have to be a Muslim. Just be a human being and say no to genocide and war. I mean, yeah. I guess I don't uh, really need to keep going because there's 28,000. It seems that's so right. He's I getting close. Like, it's been almost 20 minutes. And, you know, his mission was to go through all of them. But, you know, he, he can tell that it's, you know, uh, there's just no point. I mean, he's not getting anywhere. He's, he's just getting more and more depressed. So he's just going to wrap it up. He can't take any more. They killed Jesus Christ. Dan is telling the truth. Chris Morgan just got... That's shocking that the new ones is all... Wow. So let's get towards the yeah. end of this section. <laughs> um, overwhelming likes, I guess, uh, by... So he's just depressed <sighs> now. That was fun. I'm gonna bail. I I planned on reading till I couldn't anymore, but it's just too long. There's just too many of them. It's no end. So well done to peers. For most of us, growing up, most of our lives, our view of the world, what we believe to be true, information, reality, it was all controlled by certain institutions. It was all shaped by certain institutions. The schooling system, the education system, the universities, government institutions, leaders, the traditional news media outlets, they all work together to create a certain narrative and to control the information that we receive and what we believe to be true about reality. Now, COVID came along and completely shifted the flow of information and exposed the hypocrisy of all these institutions and exposed all the lies that these institutions had built into their populations. And people realized that the education system, the leaders, the government, and the media, they all colluded together and worked together to create a certain narrative, to create a sheep of their populations, so that they believe everything that the government tells them so that the government can completely and utterly control their lives. But COVID comes along and exposes the truth about this whole system. And so today, all these institutions, nobody holds them as an authority anymore. Nobody looks to the media for truth. Nobody looks to the media for information. Nobody believes what the government tells us. Nobody believes what the leaders tell us. And so we find ourselves today in this kind of world. And the traditional legacy media, these big podcast platforms like Peace Morgan Uns Uncensored, right? normally, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, when they come out and tell you these views should be shocking or you should believe this about the world, then people would believe that. But now when they tell you these things, or when they parrot certain views, and they're shocked and flabbergasted by people that are supposedly Nazis, and they expect the populations to react in this way, they're finding that the, re the population is not reacting this way anymore. The narrative that they're trying to uh, feed us, right? nobody believes it. Nobody is shocked. Nobody holds your viewpoint. Nobody shares your values. So Peace Morgan and, and co. are finally starting to realize that they are not the authority of information and truth and uh, morals that they think they are. That somebody like Dan Blazerian, who you view as intellectually uh, inferior compared to your intellectual uh, superiority, right? somebody like this can come along on your show. He's led a life of the bunkery, right? a hedonistic lifestyle of pleasure and enjoyment. Yeah, he can come along on your show, right? and you supposedly think that you vigorously challenged his views, but he presents his arguments, he presents his views, and to your shock and horror, most people share his sentiments. Most people view him as legitimate. Most people are more convinced by what he is saying compared to what you are saying. And this is the reality of the world that we live in today. These news outlets, governments, leaders, they no longer control the narrative. And they're starting to learn that they're having to, uh, uh, they're having to do with this. And how are they dealing with it? Censorship, of course. Just like they censored everyone during COVID, to control a certain narrative and completely destroy their lives, now they think they can continue to censor everything. But social media is so big, so vast, so many people use it, 
that no matter what they've tried to do, they've tried batting TikTok, they've tried controlling the algorithms, yet in spite of all of this, they find that they no longer control the narrative. People no longer believe them. And this is the reality of the world that we live in today. Most people now, uh, it's like, uh, you know, even though I have uh, a lot against tape, but they've woken up from the matrix, to use one of uh, his analogies. They've woken up from the matrix. And they're actually starting to think for themselves now. Before, we used to be told, this is moral and this is immoral. This is truth and this is lies. But people have realized, look, we're intelligent people. Why should I accept what you're saying? Okay, I can make up my own mind. And even though uh, somebody uh, is not some intellectual, uh, he doesn't have PhDs, all right? He's, he, he's uh, uh, someone like Dan Blazerian, okay? Yet, when I listen to his viewpoint, and I listen to your viewpoint piece, he's well-educated, he's been in the media his whole life, knows how to control narrative, knows information, yet people have decided, I'm smart enough to make up my own mind. I can determine. I can listen to both sides, and I'm going to listen to the viewpoint that I am convinced of. And this is what horrifies them more than ever. People are thinking for themselves. They're not being force-fed information. And they don't just believe information anymore just because Piers Morgan says it. Just because the government is saying it. Just because our leaders are saying it. But people are starting to use their minds. And they are starting to make up their own minds about issues. And for the, for the majority of people, what they believe today is... Contrary to what the media tells them, contrary to what their governments tell them, and contrary to what their leaders tell them. And this is absolutely horrifying, these institutions. But this is the reality of the world that we live in today. So, this has been the reaction to the Peace Morgan, uh, Dan Blazerian uh, podcast. It's been a, a very strong reaction, and the fallout continues, and much is being said and written. But in the end, this is the reality. People are using their own minds. Okay, People have intelligence and they're going to make up their own minds they're not going to be force fed information anymore and if someone like dan blazerian can come along and you're convinced of what he's saying then you're convinced regardless of the shock uh, and horror that peace morgan is going through this is the reality of the world uh thank you for listening please like the video please comment on the video uh and if you liked the content please subscribe to the channel